make a very simple sushi roll, just a vegetable and tofu sushi roll. And this is something that could be as plain as putting some cucumbers or avocados in a roll from what made from seaweed, nori, or um, you could put as many vegetables as you want. I'm gonna make a big fat roll that has a bunch of different vegetables in it, which I think you'll really like to see. It looks really beautiful when you see all the vegetables. So I'm gonna get my piece of nori out and ready to go. I'll set it over here. But before we get to that, I wanted to kind of go over what's gonna be in the sushi roll and what the options are. You can see my tray here. I've got greens, carrots, cucumbers, red bell pepper, jalapenos, I like it spicy, and some uh, strips of baked tofu or air fried tofu that's been marinated in uh, some sesame ginger marinade. So how did I cut all the vegetables up? I'm not gonna cut them all up now, but I'll just show you very briefly. I have a culinary ruler and I just cut the carrots in two inch pieces. And then, um, you know, for every vegetable, you just kind of create these planks. And then you take the planks, and I won't go through the whole thing because it takes a long time, but you just take the planks and stand them up on their sides and cut them into strips. And that's it. That's how you cut a match stick strip of any vegetable. You can do this with, and I did this with the cucumbers, but basically that's what I did with um, the cucumbers, the carrots, and even the bell pepper. They're all cut so that they're all pretty standard in size. And that's because you want everything to look even. If you just didn't have time to mess with that, and all you did was, you know, cut strips however you wanted out of your vegetables, that would be okay too. I just, you know, have kind of this perfectionistic <laughs> where, you know, I want everything to look the same because, you know, that's just how I am. But you don't have to do that. Okay, so I have my sushi rolling mat. And I like the kind that's flat. One side is green and one side is beige. And that, that kind seems to be the easiest to work with. We're gonna lay our naughty sushi down, shiny side down, rough side up. The rough side makes it easier for the uh, rice to stick. And then the rice I have is some um, Japanese sushi rice, but it's brown rice, okay? So it's not sushi rice in the sense of white sushi rice, but I call it sushi rice because it's short grain, okay? And you'll see it, it may be labeled just short grain brown rice or short grain brown sushi rice, but it's just the grains are short and it's sticky that way. I did add some, um, rice vinegar to it, some seasoned rice vinegar. This kind has a little bit of sugar and salt in it, but not a lot. And um, I didn't add too much, like to four cups of rice, I added only a couple tablespoons because for some reason the vinegar doesn't taste all that great to me with uh, brown rice. Oh, and I forgot to show you my avocado. I'm gonna go back to that. I'll come back to this. Um, with my avocado, I took the avocado and um, let me get the pit out of this one. Sorry about that. I've already done this once today. So I just take the inside out. And this avocado is almost to the point where it's getting a little softer than I like it. But I like to peel it to cut it. And the reason for that is because if I peel it, then it's easier to cut it into slices than if I were to try to cut it into slices from inside the skin of the avocado. That seems to always make the pieces look less neat. And, you know, sushi is all about appearance, right? You want everything, everything to look nice. So that avocado has a couple of brown spots on it already. So then what we're able to do this way is we're able to slice off some pieces without it messing up the top. So since I already have some nice pieces of avocado over here, I'm gonna put this up, but you can see how the top is smooth and you can cut better slices by removing the skin that way. And that's how I, I, uh, I do it now. I learned that from, uh, actually from a guy who um, <clears throat> worked in a sushi restaurant. I didn't know that before, so that was very helpful. And always keep a wet cloth when you're making sushi and a bowl of water because your hands will get sticky and messy and it just comes in handy, all right? And then you also want to 
keep your knife clean. So I want to get the avocado off my knife. So now I have my uh, nori or sushi or seaweed sitting here on the bamboo and I'm going to add the rice to it. So how much rice? Well, I don't know exactly, but this is a lot. This is a lot of area to cover. So I'm going to say it's pretty close to a cup of rice. Maybe not that, not quite that much, but close. And then I need to spread the rice, so I'm going to wet my hands just slightly. And I'm going to spread the rice, and don't get your hands too wet because it'll seep through to your seaweed. And then you'll have, you know, gummy seaweed. Nobody wants that. And make sure you spread your rice all the way to the edge because there's a tendency that people will get plenty of rice in the middle, but they'll have really thin edges. And that was not quite enough because it doesn't cover everything. So I'm gonna put a little bit more and I'll spread it out a little bit more. So, um, and we wanna leave about half an inch at the top because that's where we're gonna roll it. And if we don't leave a little border at the top, then we won't have anything to overlap and the rice will seep out and, and we don't want that. And we're using, I'm using a gentle pressure. I'm not mashing the rice down. I'm just spreading it out and it spreads out really nicely. Actually, the brown rice spreads out better than the white rice because it doesn't seem quite as sticky. Okay, so now I've got to start taking my uh, different fillings and putting them across. And we can kind of start at the middle. I, I kind of start at the lower middle, but it doesn't really matter. And then we can put a little pile of our different vegetables. This is a big roll, so you can kind of put a lot. We've got plenty of room, you know, for this roll. And remember, put an equal amount on the ends that you do in the middle, because you don't want the ends to be, you know, um, just sunken in. And that's what will happen if you don't put enough ingredients at the ends. We'll put some red bell pepper. I think red bell pepper makes it look pretty. It's not a traditional sushi ingredient, but I like the way it looks. And then I have greens. It's a mixture of um, spinach, Swiss chard, and kale. And that's, uh, you do find spinach in uh, a Japanese futamaki, which is like a, a vegetable roll. But it all, the futamaki is not a, a vegan roll. It has, usually has egg in it or fish. So we'll put our nice bright green blanched greens in here, which I think make it look really pretty. We can put um, a couple jalapeno pepper strips. Whoever gets this will say, oh, that was hot. But you know, guess who's gonna eat this? Me, and I like it hot, so I'm okay with that. And then we'll put our uh, sesame ginger tofu, two pieces of that. Uh, the sesame ginger tofu, that recipe, I'll add it to this recipe, but I make it a lot. I just marinate extra firm tofu and cook it in the air fryer for 15 minutes at 375. To press the tofu, take all the water out, wrap it in a paper towel, wrap it in, I wrap them in these like cotton cloths and put um, a cutting board on top and a book on top of that. Don't put the book directly on it or you'll ruin the book. I've done that, got the book wet. So um, then you have a, a pressed block of tofu, you slice it into slabs and then uh, marinate the slabs and cook it in the air fryer. And it comes out great every time. I've had people tell me theirs didn't come out right and then come to find out they got some kind of um, already seasoned tofu or something that was super firm, already pressed, and it was real hard on the outside so it wouldn't absorb the marinade. So if you get the kind of regular old extra firm tofu packed in water, that will absorb the marinade. If you get the kind that's vacuum sealed, that's already been pressed, it doesn't work as well. All right, so now I've got my all my ingredients laid out. I've got them, I'll even hold this up so you can see it better. Everything is neatly arranged on my seaweed, and now I just have to roll it. So I'm, I've got the seaweed, if you'll notice, it's at the very edge of my rolling mat. It's not way up here, it's at the very end so that I can pull up the rolling mat and just pull it right over all my ingredients. And then I kind of, you know, make sure this is tucked in because I don't want this to be flat out and then not roll up properly. And then I can just roll it the rest of the way. And that's it. You know, then I have a, a nice round 
you know, sushi roll. So now that I've got it rolled up, you know, I want to kind of not squeeze it, but you know, pull, hold it together just a little bit because I want to make sure that um, it's holding together. And then the other thing I can do, I can whip my hand a little bit, is I can, you know, go down to the end and make sure the end is tucked in. So I'm kind of pushing in the ends. I'll take each end and bring it down and then hold the rolling mat over the end and then like push it in a little bit. So that way, if things are sticking out, I'm kind of making them neater by pushing them in so you don't have, you know, things sticking out of the end of your sushi roll. So that is done. And then I just have to cut it. Clean up my mess a little bit. I have to cut it and plate it. So cutting is another issue. You have a good sharp knife and it helps to have a thin bladed knife. I have a pitcher of water here and I just dip my knife in the water and let the water drip off my knife and then kind of shake it because I don't want the knife to be wet, wet. I can kind of blot it a little bit because sushi is very sticky and if you don't have a wet knife, the sushi will stick to everything and then I clean it off after every cut because otherwise you're gonna have the same problem. You're gonna have the rice stick. And I'm using kind of a gentle pressure I'm, uh, I'm going to wet it a little bit more. I'm not pressing down on it. I'm not really sawing through it either. And don't use a serrated knife. Serrated knife will give you a really bad looking edge to your sushi. So you don't want to do that. Use a sharp, thin bladed knife. The best you have, sharpen your knife right before you make the sushi so it will turn out really nice. Otherwise, you know, you'll just have a big mess, and I've seen that so many times where people make, you know, spend all the time to make some sushi and then end up, it doesn't look very good. And see, this has turned out really well. You can see the all the ingredients inside. You can see the tofu, the uh, cucumbers, the carrots, the greens. It's colorful. It all held together well, and um, I guarantee you it's going to taste good, and I'll talk about what we can do when we get ready to eat it here in a second. And I'm just laying all these out on my tray. This is just a wooden board. It's not really a plate, but I think sushi looks good on wood. So there you go, there's my beautiful sushi roll. And then um, what I'll do is I have some wasabi and I just use the powdered kind. Uh, if you could get real wasabi, which is a root and it's hard to grow in most places in America, if you can get the real thing, of course, use it. But most of us have to be stuck with the kind that you reconstitute with water. Oops, almost dropped it. And it should be like the consistency of clay where you could pick it up and roll it into a ball um, and then put it on your, on your little tray and then shape it into like a little mountain. That seems to be the most popular shape that you see in a sushi bar. And then um, when you get your sushi, you get your little plate Put some soy sauce in it. I use low sodium soy sauce. You know, I'm just looking at my sushi. I forgot to put the avocado in it after all that. But it's okay. We could just eat avocado on the side. But no worries, it still looks great. But that would have been a really good addition to add that avocado. So we just, you know, dip our sushi in the soy sauce. And also, uh, if you like pickled ginger, this is really good organic um, sushi ginger. And what I like about this one is it's not dyed. So it's organic made by the ginger people. And a lot of sushi um, ginger will be bright pink. Well, that's not natural. They put some food color in it. So I like this kind. And there you have it. There's our uh, vegetable sushi roll. We could make more. I have enough rice to make more, but I'm not going to right now. Uh, if we wanted to, we could have put lettuce at the ends so that two pieces, the two end pieces would have lettuce sticking up. I, you know, I thought I might demonstrate that, but I didn't. And, um, you know, we could put different vegetables in here, or we could put uh, sweet potatoes or jackfruit mixed with Kite Hill cream cheese, lots of things I taught in my uh, plant-based sushi class where we made, you know, five different kinds of sushi rolls. So um, I'll be teaching another plant-based sushi class 
later in the year. And you can find out about my classes at chef-julia.com. I'll leave the link here uh, with the recipe for today's roll. But this was just a simple brown rice, vegetable, and tofu sushi roll. So thanks for watching. I hope you make this. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so.